What's going on guys? Today we want to talk about the issues of starting a YouTube business. There was a YouTuber by the name of Ryan Pineda. And a few years ago, he put out this video, couch flipping, and the video did really well. It did really well. And a lot of people went out and started flipping couches. And there's another guy, Mission Side Hustle. I think his name is Corey. And he does couch flipping full time. Life is a jungle. You need savage business and finance to lead you out of the jungle today. And you will consistently see people out there flipping couches talking about couch flipping. There's another couple, there's a husband and wife, I think it's in Cali. There, there's a ton of people out there flipping couches. And once again, this isn't a knock or a critique video, because I, I, I need to tell you, do you understand that bedroom sets move faster than couches? It's bedroom sets, it's couch sets, it's dining room sets, it's dinette sets, Washer and dryers are kind of on their own ecosystem, so to speak. But I'm doing this video to outline some of the issues that you're going to run into. And I need to go back in time and to talk about the whole presentation because couch flipping, like I said, there are several YouTube videos where people have been flipping couches and they've been doing They've been making money and you know, it's here, here's the thing. And once again, this isn't a slam or a slide or anything against Ryan Pineda or anyone that wants to pick up the habit of flipping couches. What I want to do is drop more information. And with that, I need to go back in time and talk about something I used to do. So my name is Glendon Cameron. You can go to Google, put in Glendon Cameron, Amazon, and you'll find my books talking about buying storage auctions, flipping stuff on Craigslist and having a garage. And one of the things that I found, and I think the timing when Ryan Pineda released that video was really good for Ryan because it was, I think it was during the beginning of COVID and people were looking for ways to make money. And a lot of people jumped on this. A lot of people got into it. And as I said, my, my whole purpose here is to provide more information for people to give people the access to how to make more money in the resale space because whole couch flipping, there's the first market. That's when you go to Apple to buy a brand new MacBook or you go to Walmart to buy a brand new television. That's the first market. All of this stuff is part of the secondary market, the used market. One of the things that you have to understand, and I'm gonna start here at the beginning, because I've watched a lot of people flip couches and make money. The first big issue is storage because typically they can get a truck and they can only store so many couches and before they have to start selling them. And then there was another video where these guys had invited Ryan out and they had gotten a warehouse and they were selling a lot of couches. And once again, this is nothing new. This is nothing new. There, there have been tons and tons of people selling used couches, used bedroom sets, used washer and dryers, used refrigerators. This is this. It's not a big thing, but I think once it gets to YouTube, it turns into something rather. And that's the first issue that I consistently see. I was watching this video of these two guys who were flipping couches and they were looking to get into another business and they were working out of the garage of their house. And I think one video, I think they made $20,000 working out of their garage, which could, I think it could hold four or five couches at one time. Cause you know, they were buying couches cleaning them up, flipping them. Once again, not a bad business. And they did like an overall profit of $20,000. And these were relatively young guys. I think that one video teen, I think they were teenagers. And for two teenagers to create a business 
and make $20,000 in one month is pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible because these guys are definitely not lazy. They're not trying to find a way around this. They're actually doing the things that they need to do to be successful in their business. But once again, here's the thing. I'm about to say some stuff. And once again, I am not trying to broadcast something I used to do, but we were selling couches, bedroom sets, dining room sets, dinette sets, washers and dryers, and a whole lot more, a whole lot more, right? And our best month selling all that stuff was a 95,000 in one month. And this was with me going out to buy storage units. And I'm gonna explain to you why we were able to make so much money. Remember what I was talking about? First issue, space. If you're going to be in a commercial type business, such as couch flipping, room sets, washer and dryers, you're going to need minimum 2,000 square feet minimum because 2,000 square feet like once again remember I said these guys who did $20,000 in one month and that was gross revenue that wasn't the amount of money that they spent buying I, I didn't watch that video but I wouldn't be shocked if they spent four and made 16 that wouldn't shock me at all but here's the thing certain things are going to sell really quick certain things are just going to hang out and you're going to need to have the surface, the presentation space to, if you got 2000 square feet, that could be 20 couches. Let's say you had 2000 square feet and let's say that space cost you $500. We're just throwing numbers out. This isn't factual. Some people could go out and find the space of 2000 or 3000 square feet for 500 bucks quite easily, but people in the larger cities, that's going to be virtually impossible. But once again, we're just throwing numbers out. 2,000 square feet, $500, and they have enough money to get 20 couches. And once they go ahead and get their advertising together, because here's another thing, the guys who are, they're doing everything. Once again, starting a business, you have to do everything. So I'm not knocking that. If you had a space that cost you 500 bucks and you could display 20 couches and you had a full-time salesperson, and let me explain to you what this full-time salesperson would be doing. They would be every day putting the couches and stuff on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and every day they would come into work and they would take down all of the old ads and put up new ads. They would completely delete all of the old ads. So on Craigslist, it's pretty easy. You just delete the ad and then go down there and renew it. So it's really easy. Facebook Marketplace, you literally have to go ahead and create new ads. But every day, their goal is to come in, replace the ads, and meet people and be on the phone all day. That's their job. You would go from selling a few couches a week to probably selling five, to seven couches, let's say in two days, because once again, you have a standard operating procedure. You have a showroom, you have a salesperson, you have someone to do the marketing. And literally, and let's say you paid this salesperson, because you, you got two ways. You can pay this salesperson a salary, or you can pay them a percentage of what they sell. I would pay them a salary because paying them a percentage of what they sell, you will be shocked at how well they would start selling those couches. I would pay them, once again, you can do it any way you want to because if you pay them a percentage, let's say you bought a couch for 400 bucks, you sold it for 1600 and you paid them 10%, so that was $160 for selling that couch or you could put them on the hourly salary and pay them Monday through Friday and you and your partner can man the shop on the weekends because once again, <clears throat> you gotta have the presentation space, you gotta have the salesperson, you have to have the marketing and then you have to have the delivery. That's once again, th these were issues that I dealt with over and essentially, let me show tell you what I did. Once we solve a lot of these issues because all of these issues that the smart enterprising entrepreneurs are going through, I went through. And when the business was really rolling, really rolling, because I still had to go out and buy stuff because that was my 
description. That was my job to go out and buy stuff. But once we got the presentation down, we got the delivery down, we worked all of the little kinks out of the business because the last three years, I hardly anything, unless I just wanted to, because what I had did is I had hired a delivery guy. Someone would come in, they would pay for it, I was like, hey, and I would actually give them the phone to the customers so they can tell the delivery guy the exact address to bring this stuff to. In the last three, almost four years, I didn't deliver anything. My whole job was to go out and buy stuff. And my business partner's job was to list stuff online. And once we got that really worked out, the money just started coming in. Because I'm telling you, because there are many guys out there who want to get into couch flipping like literally you could just put couch flipping in the youtube algorithm and you will see a ton of people in there and here's the thing i know why people get into couch flipping because couches are the second fastest moving thing in the furniture category bedroom sets are number one couches are number two dinettes and dining room sets are number three washers and dryers are the own category and essentially if you were to modernize your business if you were to put it together in a more professional manner the money you can make doing this stuff would literally blow your mind it would literally blow your mind because the whole thing is and this is one of the things i learned was about presentation about setting up the right presentation setting up the right marketing setting up because essentially i would go to the auctions and bid on units and buy stuff then we had two trucks and we had a loading crew and that, that that's a whole nother video right there because the loading crew you gotta have people who know how to load you gotta have people because essentially when we used to load the old-fashioned way we just grab stuff out of the unit and put it on the truck bad thing what we did in later years is we would have a team they would pull everything out of the unit and have it kind of along the way and we would put the heaviest stuff on first and the heaviest stuff on the bottom so this really got rid of our items destroyed doing shipping you know there, there's a certain way that you have to load these things there's a certain way you have to handle these things what i would my advice to anyone who's doing couch flipping is to open it up go from couches to bedroom sets like literally you somewhere in a town near you there's someone who's selling all this used stuff they're selling bedroom sets, couches, dinettes, all kinds of stuff. And one of the things I realized, because one of the things that I would do was focus on big full units. And before we got our storefront and before we got in the warehouse, we used to work out of market. And I cannot tell you how many times I would go in the flea market, drop furniture, bedroom sets, sofa sets, dining room set, bedroom sets, drop it off, in the morning saturday morning go out get some more stuff and would then come back later and see my booths were half empty and I look, fortunately for me i came back with a full truck because that stuff was disappearing and used furniture is a huge market and one of the things that i would recommend for anyone that wants to get into couch flipping is i would get into couch flipping bedroom flipping washer dry I would get into all that stuff because here's the thing you're going to run into periods where certain things are just going to sell better than other things and ask yourself who wants a washer and dryer virtually no one who needs a washer and dryer virtually everyone so people are because one of the things i found out and i don't even know because this was many years ago but once we were able to sell washer and dryer delivered for 300 they would take off i remember one weekend particularly busy week we had about 20 washer and dryer sets and part of me wanted to mess with the pricing because that was like washer dryer and what i did is the super nice washer and dryers i bumped the price up and i included delivery and whenever i would speak to someone i was like hey if you want to haggle you need to handle the delivery 
because the way that I had my pricing was, it was so esoteric, it was so straightforward, it was so easy, but the minute that people start like, hey, I wanna haggle, but I also want delivery, I would let them know immediately, you're not getting delivery if you wanna haggle. And I, this weekend, we like I said, we had 20 washer and dryers, and all of the super nice ones, I marked those up to 700, 800 bucks with free delivery. Cause these, this was like 50% of what they would cost new. And some of these things were pretty much in new condition. And I had this Hispanic guy come in. He came in with his wife and three children and they needed a washer and dryer. And he was like, he was the first customer of the day. And he was like, no delivery. I moved myself. And it was like the oldest washer and dryer. It worked because we tested them. And I was like, name your price. And we were asking 300 and he said $200. And I was like, give me the money. And then we rolled that washer and dryer to his pickup truck because he came with his wife and three children in the pickup truck. And then an hour later, we sold another one, then another one. So I'm here to tell you that do not limit yourself to just couch it, really expand yourself. Now, here's the thing. If you're working from home or you're working out of a storage unit, you're gonna find yourself running into limitations very quickly. And what I would suggest, depending on where you live, if you live in the city like Atlanta or Chicago or New York, finding dry space is gonna be really hard for a cheap price. But if you're in Kansas, Minnesota, or somewhere like that, you should be able to find a space and you want to find the largest space you can get for the cheapest amount of price. If you can find a space of 5,000 square feet for 500 bucks a month, take it and then put as much stuff in there as possible. One of the things I learned in the flea market is price it cheap, stack it deep. Who do we know that has done that? Number one employer in the world, Walmart. Walmarts are stacked deep and it's priced cheap. And that's one of the things that Danny kept telling me, he's stack it deep and price it cheap. And once I, cause you know, in the beginning it's like, I, I was so full of these ideas like, hey, I paid this, I should get this. And then once I came to accept this information, that's when I would literally pull stuff in there in the morning, come back in the afternoon, it, it'd be gone. It would be gone. So you want to get as much space as possible for as cheap as possible. And then you want to set yourself up professionally with a salesperson, because here's the thing. If you're just doing this stuff online, you might be able to do it. You might be able to handle it. I don't really know, but I can tell you from personal experience, having a dedicated salesperson pays for itself several times over several times over because you have so many people who are getting in these businesses and stuff and they're seeing it online and they're doing it just the way they do it online. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. What I'm saying is there's so much more you can do to make more money. You can make a lot more money if you go ahead and present your stuff better with a better concept, with a better presentation. Because like I said, Corey from Mission Side Hustle, he actually come in on one of my videos because I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be straight up. I got pissed off. I was like, I was talking about this stuff for years and it wasn't like that many people who got onto it, but I had to remember the timing and when people were jumping on this stuff and this was during early pandemic and people needed to make money and there were so many people like the husband and wife, they made a lot of money. So many people made a lot of money just flipping couches. And I was just sitting there. If you would do more, you would make way more. And I'm talking about mind blowing money. Now, once again, let me say this. Storage auctions are not what they used to be. I have not bought a storage unit since 2009. So I cannot give you any information. I cannot answer any questions about are storage units a good place to get inventory because it is 2023, 14 years ago. I have no clue what's going on in that business. I have no clue how they're making money in that business. So I cannot answer that. But once again, where are these people getting these couches? Craigslist, Facebook, that's where you're getting it from. So you can go ahead and get your items from these same places, clean them up better, 
and put a better presentation on it and you will be shocked at the money you can make literally because when ryan put out that video and i saw it i didn't think nothing of it because i was like man i made more money than that like way more money than that so you can make a lot of money selling you stuff which is what got me in the storage auction business so once again you see a video talking about flipping couches cool go ahead and follow that but go ahead and get some more stuff and get more room and get a better transportation system because once you start to modernize and systemize and set this up, you just will not want to go back and do business the way that you were doing business. You just don't want to do that. My name is Glendon Cameron. We got some new training and stuff that's coming the 1st of March. So be ready, be waiting, and I will see you guys later.